let's talk about tilt of the earth's axis so in order to understand tilt of the earth axis we need to understand what is the orbital plane well orbital plane is the plane about which uh, earth rotates around the sun in fact you will realize that this orbital plane is same for all the planets so this is called plane of ecliptic all right so the orbital plane or plane of ecliptic is considered as a horizontal direction now if you have defined horizontal the 90 degree to that that is perpendicular direction is going to be vertical so we have defined vertical now suppose this is the earth's axis and earth is going to rotate like this from west to east if, uh, uh, if she is observed from the top it will be anti-clockwise anti-clockwise so this angle made from this vertical is the tilt of the earth's axis and now this is approximately 23.5 degree actually this angle varies from 22.1 to 24.5 degree for an approximate cycle of 26,000 years to be precise the present value is 23 degree 27 minute or 23.4393 degree now let's talk about true motion of the earth around sun so imagine that this is the sun at one of the foci and this is the earth's orbit around the sun and just for sake of simplicity we are considering four position say e1 e2 e3 and e4 and the sun is at was one of the foci by the way this is going to be the orbital plane Now let's talk about apparent annual motion of sun around the earth. So here if the earth is here at E1, you will see the sun is here at the right hand side. So similarly in the relative motion imagine is if the earth is at the center, then sun is going to be on the right hand side. So here there is going to be sun at S1 position. Now the earth has moved to E2 and you see uh, from earth the sun is here on the top. So similarly the sun has moved and here the sun is at the top. So here it is S2. Likewise we will be having S3 and S4. So we can say the motion of the earth around the sun is this one similarly there is a motion of sun around the earth like this and we are having four strategic location like s1 s2 s3 and s4 by the way both these motions will be having the same plane of ecliptic actually this is the orbital plane right now let's talk about this celestial sphere so here this is the sun and the sun is moving like this apparently in a year so this is the apparent annual motion of the sun so here it is here at position one then it is at position two then it is at position three and then four and so on and again it keep repeating so this is equinoctial let me just mark this is the projection of the equator suppose this is the equator so the equator is projected here and this is the equinoctial well this green color is the plane of ecliptic and the angle this 23.5 degree it is the obliquity of ecliptic which depends on the tilt of the earth now 
this angle is nothing but declination which is uh, the latitude projected in the sky. So, here uh, declination is maximum that is 23.5 degree north depending on the obliquity of ecliptic and as the sun moves like this, sun is crossing from north to south. So, at this point the declination is 0 sun is here at the equator, then sun moves like this and so on. So, at position 3, the sun's declination is again 23.5 degrees south and now the sun's declination is start reducing. It goes like this and here again 0 and by the way, sun is crossing from south to north. So, here sun is crossing from south to north and at this point it is 0. All right. So, the declination of the sun keeps varying. Now, this journey of the earth can be explained uh, with these uh, four simple points. So, the point number 1 here it is 21st June and this is called summer solstice and here the declination is maximum northerly side and you will see the north end of the earth is tilted towards the sun and as the earth moves now let us consider the position 3 here the south end is tilted towards the sun. So, this is winter solstice considering the northern hemisphere and here you will be having maximum south declination and that happened on 22nd December. So, these position 1 and 3 you can correlate here with this diagram, this is position 1 and this is position 3. Position 1 maximum north declination, position 3 maximum south declination. All right. Similarly, there are position 2 and 4. Position number 2, this is the autumnal equinox and here the declination is 0. By the way, this happens on 23rd September, on or about 23rd September. Similarly, we are having this position 4 that is on 21st March, vernal equinox, this is what it is we call and the declination here is again 0. So, in order to explain it further, let me just explain here, this is uh, 21st June that is position 1, here the declination is maximum north declination and we call it summer solstice for northern hemisphere. So, look at this diagram, here this is the equator 0 degree, this is 23.5 degree that is Tropic of Cancer and this is 66.5 degree while this is the arc, arctic circle, right, that is how it is. Similarly, when we go down, this is 23.5 degree south, this is Tropic of Capricorn, then 66.5 degree south, this is Antarctic circle and earth is tilted. So, this is the tilt of the earth. Well, if the sun's rays are falling here at Tropic of Cancer, that means sun's rays are directed at 23.5 degree north latitude, approximately 23.5 degree north latitude, what happens? You will see the northern end this northern hemisphere is more exposed to the direct sunlight and that is why it will be having northern hemisphere will be quite hot and the southern hemisphere is away, the south end is away from the sun, the southern hemisphere will be relatively cold. All right. Now, with the same logic, let us have this scenario. Here the sun's rays are directed on Tropic of Capricorn that is uh, 23.5 degree south latitude and here you will see the south end is more close to the sun, it is more exposed. So, here the southern hemisphere will be hot and obviously the northern hemisphere will receive lesser energy that is going to be relatively cold. So, here 22nd December, 
there is a maximum south declination and considering northern hemisphere we, we, we should call it as a winter solstice. Now let us talk about this journey. So when the earth is moving from position 4 then 1 and then 2. So that means from vernal equinox to autumnal equinox you will see the north end is tilted towards the sun. So northern hemisphere is receiving more energy and is going to be comparatively hot. Then we are having this journey that is 2, 3 and 4 that is autumnal equinox to vernal equinox and here the south end is tilted towards the sun. So southern hemisphere is ex more exposed and the southern uh, hemisphere will be hot. And obviously, if the southern hemisphere is hot, the northern hemisphere is going to be cold. Now, considering the northern hemisphere, look at this. There is a pretty cold here. But now, the heat start building in northern hemisphere and it goes on. So, here the season is a spring. All right. And again, the northern hemisphere is uh, fully exposed. This is a maximum declination and uh, it, there is a lot of heat so we are having this summer season right after 23rd september again uh, you'll see the south end is uh, tilted towards the sun and the north end is away so we have, so this summer start reducing we are having autumn and then from uh, winter solstice Again, we are moving here like this. Uh, north end is very much away from the sun, does not get much heat. So, north end is having cold, comparatively cold region and you are having a winter season. Well, uh, these are pretty theoretical seasons. Now, to justify autumnal equinox, and vernal equinox you realize that the sun's rays are directly falling at the equator because the declination is zero. Now let us talk about rotation of earth. Well, as I discussed, if you look from the north pole, the rotation of earth is uh, anti-clockwise and as you know the shape of the earth is nearly spherical it takes about uh, 24 hours for one rotation so you realize that the earth is having two spheres or two circles of illumination one is this one this is called zone of illumination or circle of illumination the other one is the darkness that is a circle of darkness or zone of darkness. So, entire place on the surface of earth, they keep passing through these circles of zones and thus giving day and night. Now, we will try to explain the unequal period of day and night. So, let us consider northern summer season. Northern summer season means the north end is tilted towards the sun and the sun's rays are directed at Tropic of Cancer. On the summer solstice day, uh, they are exactly at 23.5 degree north. So, what is happening? The sun's rays are at 23.5 degree north. You realize, let me just, you realize that the sun's rays are here in this region. And if the sun's rays are here in this region, imagine that this is the daylight and another one is this one is darkness darkness uh, let me just uh, create with this color so this is darkness so at equator equal period of day and night will be there however as you go up you realize that the period of day is longer. So, in the northern hemisphere, as you go up, the, there will be longer days and shorter nights. Longer days, shorter nights mean sunrise will be earlier 
and sunset will be later. I will give you one example. Suppose at equator sunrise is at 0600, sunrise and sunset is at 1800, sunset. So, as you go up, if the day is longer, maybe sunrise will take place at 4 o'clock and the sunset will be at 2000. So, uh, sunrise will be earlier and sunset will be later. Now, on summer solstice day, that is when you are having a maximum declination, uh, when you go here in this uh, arctic circle, what you realize that there is, there is, there is no uh, night, there is continuous daylight itself because this is exposed to the daylight. Similarly, if we go down south, you realize the number of uh, day the, is short, that is shorter days and the nights are obviously longer and obviously sunrise is later and sunset is earlier. And if you go within Antarctic circle on summer solstice day, there will be only night, there will not be any day. So, this is just one example. The second one is southern summer season and here sun's rays are falling at Tropic of Capricorn that is 23.5 degrees south latitude. So, if the sun's rays are falling like this, so in the southern hemisphere, by the way, let me just mark the daylight portion. So, here you will see the number of uh, day is longer days are longer, nights are shorter. Obviously, day longer means sunrise is earlier, sunset is later and in the Antarctic circle on winter solstice day, there is no night, there is only daylight. You can see here, there is only daylight. Now, we can talk about the reverse part. So, in the in northern hemisphere, if you go here, the days are shorter and the nights are longer. And if you go to the arctic circle, there is no daylight, only there is night and that happens on winter solstice day. On autumnal equinox, uh, declination is 0 degree. Now look at this, the sun's rays are falling exactly at 0 degree here or maybe they are falling here. So, the entire earth you can divide equally. So, there are equal period of day and night whether you are on autumnal equinox or whether you are on vernal equinox. So, this makes uh, the variable day and night throughout the earth, throughout the season.